I got a different kind of video for you today, sort of a story time mixed with a tutorial. So it's my birthday soon, in a couple days, early December, and I got this as a present from my significant other, Lindsay. It's a video waveform. Obviously all my fellow video nerds out there have seen these before, but turning it into kind of a print art thing was Lindsay's idea, and I think it turned out really awesome. So a couple benefits here. Let me set this down. So obviously the idea here is a little bit more than just frame a waveform, and we'll get into that in a minute, but not only does it work as that kind of abstract art, but also it will keep your waveform reading skills tip top whenever you walk by it and see it. But it can also be this fine little secret where to a stranger it just looks like colorful lines, but to you, you can see an image inside of it, like in the Matrix when they get really good at deciphering the green code and they can start to see reality in that. Kind of like that. But there's way too much information to decode the matrix. But first, let's start with a sample clip so I can give you a refresher on waveforms in case you're not really good at seeing the matrix in this yet. And to get that clip, let's download something from Storyblocks, which also happens to be the sponsor of today's video. All right, so I've got a clip here that I downloaded from Storyblocks. I've loaded it into Resolve, which is what I'm gonna be using for this demonstration, but theoretically you could use any NLE or whatever that had a video waveform that you liked. I just happen to like the tools in Resolve and I think they make for a better result and I'll show you how. And I'm sure you can probably do this in the free version of Resolve too. This whole thing should be free unless you wanna get it printed. So it's kind of a cool gift because it's free all the way through as long as you keep it digital. So why not, right? Uh, okay, so we got a little waterfall here. Looks like this, let's play it back for a second. So slow motion water falling down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over to the color panel in Resolve, which is where we have the waveform hidden. And it's in the bottom right hand corner, but I'm gonna pop it out to make it bigger and easier to see, which is what that little square does there. And you can resize this now if you want, which is one of the main reasons why I like Resolve is because we're gonna take a screen capture of this afterwards, so we wanna be able to make the waveform as big as possible. So this is a 10-bit waveform, which is why it goes from zero all the way to 1023. If it was an eight-bit, it would be zero to 255. Pure white will be at the very top, and then black will be at the very bottom. And you read the waveform from left to right. Imagine it like your image is being scanned vertically from left to right, vertical lines. And each line, it's going to assess, you know, the color and the brightness in there, and then draw that on the waveform. And we'll be able to see this with motion, which is what makes waveforms the easiest to understand, but also the coolest, that you can actually see motion in the waveform. So I'm gonna press play and we're gonna see the waterfall move in the waveform here. So you see how these white and light blue lines are kind of moving up and down, that's the waterfall. And as we move across here, now this is a particular type of waveform. And I'm gonna show you that setting right now because it's, it's my favorite for this purpose. We hit the settings here. We are on the Y, which generally refers to, I think, Luma, like the brightness. But there's also CBCR, which looks like this, and then RGB. RGB might be the default in many cases. And you can turn certain channels off and on. And maybe that creates an interesting look that you really like. Maybe you like this sort of magenta style one here. But if we switch to the Y, the Luma, normally it looks like this in NLEs. And that's basically just showing you sort of where your exposure is on the waveform. So, you know, on the left, we're darker because that's where the rocks and the, and the dark foliage is. And then up here with the bright water, it's over here. But if we check off colorize, which is a cool feature in Resolve, then now we get to see the color of those images as well. So over here where that foliage is, we get to see it's green. It's dark and it's green. So this is how we can start to sort of read into the matrix kind of thing I was talking about where we know this is a dark green area on the left side of the frame. And then we know that there's some, you know, white and blue stuff here. And again, if we had motion, we could tell that it was also moving and, you know, working in kind of loops. And we could determine maybe that's a waterfall or something, or maybe you think it's a fountain. Now we also have the options here for the two different sort of brightnesses of the display. If we turn that all the way down, then we don't see those lines anymore. Probably a good idea if you're gonna turn this into artwork, but you can also make it really intense. Normally it's in the middle and then the waveform brightness itself. You can make it really dark or really bright. Again, the brightness of this, you can adjust based on taste for your print that we're making, uh, but for the actual tool, I think normally the 50-50 versions on Resolve work really well for using it in the app to actually use it as a waveform. And then reference levels are where we set our lower and our high point. So if we wanted to change our low point up a little bit, because maybe we didn't want to exceed a certain darkness and maybe we didn't want to exceed a certain brightness, we can set levels there and then work within that. Again, this is, this is not for making abstract art out of it. This is actually for using it, but I thought I would explain it anyway. So we'll turn those off and I will brighten up the waveform just a little bit and I'll leave it uncolorized. And this is kind of the mode that we're gonna be making our artwork out of. If we put it right underneath the video clip here, we can see exactly how, like I said, it's like vertical strips 
On the right hand side, we're getting some warm sunlight in and it's making the rocks a little bit brighter. So the rocks on the right are now more of a yellowy green and they go higher than the rocks over here on the left that have darker moss and leaves on them. And now the black areas are basically where there's no information. And this is the part I think that throws a lot of people off. Like I said, imagine if you scan a vertical line and if in that line you decide there's some green stuff and the green stuff is this bright down here. Well, it puts black above it, not because there's nothing in that line or not because up here in the frame it's pure black. It just means there's nothing in the frame there that registers in this brightness area. It only registers in this luminance value is a probably more correct term. So there's nothing in that, in, that, in that sliver that is this bright or this bright. It's only this bright and it's only this color. So black doesn't mean, black doesn't indicate anything about the frame. It indicates that there's nothing going on in that register on the waveform. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, that's just sort of a crash course on how to read a waveform. Now I'm gonna show you how to take this waveform and get it ready to print and put some final touches on it to turn it into graphic art. But before we do that, let me show you a few more stock footage examples converted in waveforms to sort of help you get faster and better at reading waveforms for what they are by giving you examples. And I'll use those from Storyblocks as well while I tell you about them, the sponsor of today's video. So sometimes you don't have the shot you need and there's no way you're gonna be able to go out and get it before you run out of time, run out of money, or run out of patience by completely derailing your creative momentum. And that's where Storyblocks comes in. They've got subscriptions for every budget that give you access to a vast royalty-free library with unlimited downloads, allowing you to use the footage worry-free for both personal and commercial projects. They're also focused on enriching their catalog with diverse and inclusive content to provide useful assets to creators of varying needs and audiences. And this is all easily accessed using their intuitive interface with filters for 4K video at multiple frame rates, along with backgrounds and After Effects templates. And if you've ever browsed Storyblocks before, I think you'll be truly impressed by just how exhaustive their library is. And I encourage you to learn more about them by using the link in the description below. Okay, so let's go through the turning this into an image aspect. So the reason why I like Resolve is like I said, you can actually make the, the waveform aspect quite large. Now something I should mention actually before we export this up to Photoshop is that you can adjust your highlights and your shadows and your contrast a bit if you want to sort of finesse the way the waveform falls into the gap. And this does make the image a little bit of a lie and kind of obscures that whole being able to read it like the matrix thing. But if you have an image that isn't very contrasty, this might help make it pop a little bit. And so for that, you could do a number of things. You could jump into your curves and you know increase the highlights and shadows this way, try to make it spread over the image a little bit more. Like I said, you could jump into contrast and turn that up, adjust the pivot on it. And maybe you liked it more like this where it sort of ramped up, whatever. Obviously the real images you can see now is clipping but it does fill the waveform better. So as long as you know what it's supposed to represent and you're okay with doing this, fine. Otherwise, you know, I'm gonna reset it and leave it as it was normally, depends on your image. And so then we'll go back to full screen. Like I said, we'll take a print screen of it and then we'll come over to Photoshop and we'll paste it in here. And then now we basically just need to crop away the rest of the nonsense, which is easy to do. Again, you can use whatever photo editing app you want. I'm not gonna give you a Photoshop tutorial here. But in this case, I'm just scaling up the, to get rid of the text and anything else. And then we'll apply that. And then again in here, if you wanted, you could adjust some contrast and some brightness and stuff. You could increase the saturation, whatever you wanted to do to make the photo pop. Let me give you, I'll do a couple quick things. Let's go hue saturation. Let's increase the saturation a little bit to make those, um, the colors that are in the image pop a little bit better. And actually, it's actually kind of looking pretty cool already to be honest. And then if you plan to send it to print, you're gonna to wanna to crop it to the dimensions of the print. I think this one was a 24 by 36 or the other way around, 36 by 24. So a three by two. So if we go in, we set it a three by two, then we can crop it and you know set the crop where we want it. Maybe we want it like this. And then now we have a 24 by 30 or 30, 36 by 24 crop. And you know, in Photoshop, you can come in and set the, the DPI accordingly as well. We, in this case, we're gonna upscale it because we got it from print screen. So we're gonna upscale it to a much higher resolution to get us a 24 by 36 at 300 DPI like that. Another thing you could consider doing if you didn't want it on a black background is that you could invert the black background from this waveform into white, or you could invert the entire image, which would also flip the colors. Again, it would just be your little secret, but to give you an idea, if we invert the image, now it's on a white background and it looks like that. Or in other words, you could go in and set it to just choose black. So you can finesse it a little bit, but even switching it to white looks kind of cool as well. So there's some options. 
And then from there, you just save it out and send it to print. But I'd love to see some of your creations. So even if you don't plan on printing one of these out, I still want you to export a digital version of one of your favorite images, upload it to Twitter or Instagram and use the hashtag waveform art undone. You can either show it with the original image or keep it secret and make people guess what the original image was. And on that note, let's test your deciphering skills with this one, the print that Lindsay got me, and let's translate this waveform into the original image. This is hard to show without getting any reflections on it, but uh, okay, so let's work our way across here. Like I said, it's like vertical slices from left to right. Okay, so what do we see here? We see some bright greeny yellow patches that cover quite a range of exposure values, and then some light blue, almost clipping color up here. It's probably safe to assume that this is probably a bright blue sky, a bit of a teal colored sky actually, and then this could be anything from grass to a field. We can determine from the colors that it's very green. And then in here, this section right here, I know myself really well to know that these rosy colors here and where they fall are my skin tones. I'm always very pink, and this is pink Gerald right here. And also, look what shirt I'm wearing right now, so we might be able to determine that this blue area right here might be a blue t-shirt. So we got a blue t-shirt with that sort of arcing pattern and then some rosy skin tones. So this would be maybe a face, and the top of a torso right there. And then this one is gonna be impossible to tell unless you know what it is because it's brighter than the grass and it's kind of beige, but it's sitting up by my face, so that's kind of confusing. So it's not physically up by my face in the shot, but it's actually my pants, the way I was sitting. I was sitting crisscross applesauce and my knee was getting hit with sunlight, so it brought the exposure of my you know, khaki colored pants up to here. Then moving across, there's some more confusion in the frame because where this blue, it gets kind of mixed in with some teal and then that teal color covers a massive range of exposure. And then again, there's that similar over here of the light blue coming right in the top. Now what this is, is this is Lindsay's sort of, you know, green, greeny blue colored shirt. It's kind of a teal colored shirt that has, that she's reaching her arm out to hold the camera. So the sun is hitting some of it and not hitting others and it gets dark as it moves across her body. So this is the range of her green shirt. And then her skin tone is in here, just like mine, but she's got some more highlights on it. And I think, it's hard to say for sure, but I think that the whites over here in her skin might actually be her teeth. <laughs> got like a really bright smile. And then the skin tones actually fade down and over because she was wearing an open neck shirt. So you can actually see it goes darker as it gets drawn into shadow into her neck. And then over here again, we have a mixture of stuff where we got some of that grass again that's being included with shadow, a little bit more of the shirt. And then the what's dumbing down the color over here, the saturation versus over here, is Lindsay's hair is actually kind of uh, browning up the colors over here until the very extreme where the greens come back in. And then we've got a little bit more sky peeking up over in the corner. So when I look at this, because I know the original image and, and the process of transforming a waveform, I can see, you know, both of our faces here with a little bit of bright sunny day between us, sitting down in an open field near water, and we're both smiling, and I can tell what shirts we're wearing as well. And so that's the idea, you know? All right. Thank you to Lindsay for a great birthday present. It's an awesome present for a video nerd like me. And I think it makes for a great upcoming Christmas present as well for, you know, the photo video nerd in your circle. Okay, I think that's enough talk about this. Like I said, I'd love to see some of your favorite waveform art, so upload it and tag me on a social platform, and I'm gonna go find a place to hang this. All right, I'm done.